Hi, this is Stephen O'Keefe, and this is a video discussion on my animated intro for Alzheimer's Disease Portrait of an Illness, which I completed using traditional animation methods back in 1990, or 28 years ago, and I wanted to go into pretty elaborate detail as to what was required to complete a very brief animation like this back in the day without any type of computer animation assistance. Uh, I was a self-trained animator. I began as a child making flip books uh, with marker and pencil and then evolved to doing uh, acetate cells where I would uh, draw an image on paper, ink it on one side of the acetate cell and paint it on the other side in the traditional or Disney method and then these uh, paintings could be overlaid onto backgrounds. And uh, I would do these for myself, and once uh, school friends saw what I was doing, they wanted me to draw their favorite cartoon characters, and they would give me a little bit of lunch money to cover my expenses, and I would do that for them. But I eventually uh, taught myself how to do 24 frame a second animation once I was able to afford a Super 8 camera, which I paid for through uh, painting commission uh, oil and acrylics for other people. And I started doing just animation on paper, just eight and a half by 11 paper, and uh, setting the camera up in my bedroom and doing animation tests on Super 8. Uh, once I uh, went to college, they did have an animation room, but the animation department was shut down. They were bringing in a computer animation program, but they did give me access to the animation room where I could work on my animations and use the Oxberry animation camera and also view all kinds of animated films that they had in their library. I would go in in the nights all alone and thread up the 16 millimeter projector and watch animations from everybody from Norman McLaren to uh, Ryan Larkin. And that was great, but uh, ultimately as a traditional animator I was on my own. And having those talents in a small town like Halifax uh, got around, and I was contacted by the Nova Scotia Alzheimer's Society through the Atlantic Filmmakers Cooperative back in 1990 because they wanted some form of animated intro for a series they were doing on the illness. My contact there was a man named Chris Koth, and uh, he had a very definite concept. He said he wanted a flower wilting to the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. I proposed a number of things. I said I could uh, create a, a fake flower, which I could stop motion animate, uh, wilting away to the symptoms. I said I could take a real flower and put it under a heat lamp and do a time-lapse photography of it decomposing. And uh, I also suggested what I sort of had in my mind once he told me what the concept was, which was a lap-dissolving pastel animation of the petals of the flower uh, blowing away with each symptom. And uh, Chris was very interested in that, so he asked me how much it would cost, and I said about, you know, $600, $800. He said that was fine. And uh, we worked on how to cut costs, like for the uh, sound elements we could... Uh, just use the staff at the Alzheimer's Society to read off the symptoms and that would only involve me bringing in a rented audio recorder and that would save money on actors and stuff like that. And the pastel chalk and the paper was very inexpensive. The real money came into what it would cost to uh, actually have the film developed and transferred uh, in Toronto because this was being done in the Maritimes. So off I went, and uh, the first stage, of course, would be to make the pastel drawings. I think I worked out 52 drawings at 8-frame lap dissolves on 16mm film at 24 frames a second, which would give you about, I think, 18 seconds of animation. What was involved, of course, was doing the actual pastel drawings, and uh, I did those in my apartment on my own. And uh, it was uh, very dusty. I remember multiple times uh, blowing my nose and all kinds of purple and yellow and blue pastel chalk would be coming out of there. It was very, very dusty. Thankfully, the pastels are non-toxic. But I didn't use much fixative on them. I had to be very careful with them because I didn't want the fixative to gloss coat the uh, pastel and reflect when the lights were on them on the animation stand. So uh, beyond that, I was very uh, concerned about readability 
because uh, not only was I shooting on 16mm film, but it would be transferred to video. And then these videos would be dubbed off, probably on VHS, and broadcast on television, and probably to people who, you know, may be suffering from the illness and might have a bit of readability problems as far as to what they were seeing with all this lap dissolve animation. So I made sure to outline the uh, pastel drawings of the flower with a very heavy black marker outline. And I did entertain the idea that I could do a reverse matte on that black line and fill it in with a uh, moving pattern to give it a bit of interest. But again, I didn't think it would be picked up on television. I didn't think the VHS would pick it up. I was right about that. But for this high def transfer, which I put on uh, YouTube uh, of the short uh, intro, I did actually add in digitally that pattern into the black outline because in high definition it reads too much. That's exactly the opposite. It was never meant to be seen in 2K. But um, beyond that, what you're seeing in, in the uh, YouTube video is exactly uh, what was shown on television and in the uh, videos they handed out. And the other issue was the petals of the flower had to be timed within these lap dissolves to detach when a symptom of the disease was being mentioned. And that was something I worked out because I had control of the sound as well. I was very good in the sound studios at the uh, art college, and I'd also worked in sound and cable television before I went to college. So uh, I knew that really what I needed was a high quality audio recorder, which was uh, a Nagra, which I believe I rented from the uh, film co-op. And I brought it down to the Alzheimer's Society, and I think I had the staff repeat the lines three, five times each. They weren't actors, but they did the best they could, and they were fine with it. And uh, then I was able to do the sound mix uh, digitally at the Center for Art Tapes, which again was a very uh, budget-conscious uh, decision. But they did have a uh, digital mixer, and I was able to go straight from the Nagra to digital, and then dub the whole thing down uh, not only to a digital master, but a cassette master on metal tape. So I could uh, dub, you know, basically a first generation digital dub onto the final video master with the animation. So having control over the sound where I could edit in each symptom being spoken and having control over the animation where each lap dissolve would happen, these eight frame dissolves with 52 pastel drawings, I was able to pull it off that the petals were detaching with, with each symptom uh, even though the whole thing was one giant lap dissolve. Now, when you're doing these dissolves on the animation camera, uh, you have to do all the math, meaning that you have an exposure, which is your you know, general animation exposure, but as you're advancing frame by frame in the animation photography on the animation stand, you have to take each pastel drawing and dial down the exposure so it fades out, and then you have to roll the film back the six or seven frames required and then dial in the exposure of the next pastel drawing and then dial that out and then roll the film back and dial in the exposure of the next pastel drawing so you're getting this very very filmic you know fading pulsing uh, amorphous uh, blending effect which I wanted which was this gradual erosion of Alzheimer disease but again with this flower which was very well defined and readable so that people knew what they were looking at on television and VHS copies. But the real trick of this animated intro was how I did an in-camera dissolve to the opening title where it says Alzheimer disease portrait of an illness while all these other dissolves are going on. So you have all these lap dissolves happening, these eight frame dissolves and then you have to dial all those out using the mathematics and your exposure and dial in this title fading in over all these other dissolves and do the exposure math for all that. So that was very complex and it was all done in camera. So you have a 52 frame animation with 8 frame lap dissolves and then a 2 second dissolve of the title fading in as all these other lap dissolves are happening and all done in camera using the wonderful mathematics of animation camera exposure. 
The title itself was just a laser print on clear acetate using blue ink, and I painted in the uh, main letters Alzheimer's disease just manually on the reverse of the acetate, and uh, other title cards were also required for different video cassettes, and they were all shot on the same reel of film once I finished the main lap dissolve animation. So I was happy to say I pulled it off. And in fact, I did it in one take. I was very satisfied that my math was correct and I didn't notice any errors or issues with the photography. All the frame counts were exactly where they had to be. I ticked them all off my animation chart and I said, well, I don't see any mistakes. Let's ship this 16 millimeter negative off to Toronto and just have them telecine it onto three quarter inch uh, industrial video tape for the master and we'll see what happens. Basically, I had to wait for that uh, video transfer to come back, and at the same time, uh, the computer animation course at the art college wanted me to give them a tour of the animation stand at the film co-op, because I was basically the only person who was using it, beyond people who would use it to just film credits for their independent films. I actually would also do animated credits for other people's films as well. That was another job I did in Halifax. But ultimately uh, the college uh, wanted to see how I worked and I brought them uh, into the tiny tiny animation room, the uh, computer animation class, and they also wanted to see the finished product. And uh, one of the people in that class um, was a friend of mine. His name was uh, John Cars. He ended up working at Disney and Pixar and actually winning an Oscar for a Disney short called Paper Man. And he was in that class and, you know, uh, he was interested in it. And I said, I need a bit of music. You play guitar. I knew you play guitar. I said, you just strum some guitar and I'm going to reverb it and make it sound very, just make it sound dark and moody. And then you just strum, you know, we set up a session in a sound studio and he um, had his guitar and just sort of strummed it, you know, nothing, almost jazz style, just noodling. So I ended up using uh, that uh, as the bass sound underneath with uh, wind noises and the symptoms. And uh, again, it was all mixed digitally. And uh, once the video transfer came back from Toronto, with my heart palpitating, I, I ran to the nearest industrial deck I could find and played it. And there it was, the whole thing worked, all one take, all in camera. Didn't have to do a reshoot, nothing. So what I did uh, was I had arranged that uh, the animation class could see the finished product. And we'd also bring in Chris Koth to the class because the animation students would eventually, hopefully, be doing this, doing contract work. And uh, the instructor thought it was valuable that, uh, you know, I would bring in the client and the client could see the work and comment on it, and that would be a very good experience for the students. So, um, you know, it was interesting showing the class what they were seeing at a very early stage on, on the animation stand, and also having Chris Koth there waiting to see how it turned out and how the staff sounded doing all the symptoms and all that stuff. And uh, I synchronized the audio, I dubbed the audio onto the uh, video master, it totally synchronized perfectly because I had control over the sound and I had control over the image. And uh, we set up a little afternoon session at the animation class and Chris Koth came around and I premiered it to the class and to Chris and Chris was just blown away. He was so happy with it. He was just over the moon. He was so impressed. So that was great. It was great for my reputation, great for the class, but more importantly, it was great for the client. He got exactly what he wanted and more. He took the video master dub and off he went. He was pleased as punch, and uh, that was that. So, even though it's only 20 seconds of animation, even though it looks very quaint, I know it looks very quaint looking at it now, that is everything that went into doing an animation like that back in the day. Uh, I had to load the film, I had to set up the lights on the camera, make sure there's no flicker variations. You have to shoot in the nights because the way the uh, film cooperative had the room, was that uh, there's a lot of light leaks through the windows, so it was just better to shoot at night so that there wasn't any sunlight coming in through the windows and, and changing the ambient light while you're doing animation work. So it had to be shot in the middle of the night and, you know, all these things and couriering the 
uh, 16 millimeter off to Toronto, having to courier it back, and you know, paying them and paying the bills. I even paid John Carr as I paid him a fee f for his uh, guitar work, and you know, have him sign a release and all that stuff. And you know, that's even though it's just a little 20 second thing, and it looks very quaint. That's that's what went into animation back in the day. Now, as I'm showing in this video, I took slides of um, about half, I think about half or, or a third at least, of the uh, pastel drawings. You can see them here in very high quality. They were photographed on 35 millimeter film and I've also taken uh, pictures of the uh, 52 frames laid out on the uh, floor of the Atlantic Filmmakers Cooperative so you can see them. And they took up the whole floor like that was a, a boardroom and it took up one end of the floor to the other for those 52 drawings to get them all photographed together. So that, that was what was involved back then before uh, computer animation really took took hold. Uh, Disney was using a system called CAPS, Computer Animation Production System, by 1990. Beyond that, um, there wasn't any computer assistance. That's what you had to go through to do one of those things all on your own. I didn't really make much money off, off this Alzheimer project. I think I made about 100 or 200 dollars. But uh, it was more, more something that I wanted to do. It was something that I found interesting. And uh, I got a lot of good experiences and a lot of good um, referrals from it. So that's how this little tiny short was completed 28 years ago. And I'm also very pleased with the sound. It still sounds crystal clear 28 years later. I'm glad I mixed it digital and in stereo and did all those stereo pans with the wind and the voices coming from all directions. That, that seems to hold up even to this day.